Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today we're gonna to talk about the two most important verbs that you can learn in Spanish. So the two most important verbs are estar and ser. So the two most important verbs, now there are a lot of important verbs in Spanish, but as we go thinking about the top 20 verbs, the top 10 verbs, the top five verbs, as we start to go down, they each become more and more important. Doesn't mean that the other ones aren't important, but that if you had to learn two verbs in Spanish, which ones would they be? And I would say estar and ser. And so in this video, I'm gonna talk about three different points on why ser and estar are the most important verbs and how we should go about learning them. So point number one is that these two verbs are the most important because they are some of the most common verbs that you're going to use in almost every sentence. Think about the first time that you learn Spanish. You're thinking, I am this, you are that, he, she is this. And in Spanish, we have two forms of to be. We have ser and estar. And now this is really important. In my lessons, when I tell people how to learn Spanish, I really try to drive in that anytime you're learning any kind of rule around a word, try to find the 90% rule. If you're trying to conjugate some verbs and you're not really sure how because there are so many different exceptions, think about the one rule that will get you 90% of the way there. And so in this area, for a set and a stat, the most important rule, if sometimes you're still mixing it up, is a stat is a non-permanent way of being and set is a permanent way of being. Now there are gonna be a lot of different uh, caveats to this and different rules, but if we try to learn all 10 rules, every time you have to use set or estar, you're gonna be thinking about all 10 rules, thinking, okay, so which am I not using now? I mean, it's not permanent, but it's a date, but it's a conditional, it's an emotion, which one is it? It's like, is it permanent or is it not? And take the guess. Usually, you're going to be right, and for those times that you're not right, your language partner is gonna correct you. And you can think about it in this scenario. So, you have to use set or estar, and you're thinking, hmm, I'm not really sure which one to use, but I think it's a non-permanent state of being, so I'm going to use estar. And it just so happens that you get it correct and your language partner is like, awesome, you got it. And you're like, cool, awesome, no sweat off my back. I don't have to remember this because I got it right and I'm just gonna keep going and talking. And then you get to another roadblock where it's said or estar and you're like, hmm, I think this is a permanent state of being, so I'm gonna use said, and you get it wrong. That's when your, per your partner's gonna be like, well, you got it wrong because of this, and then you're like, cool, awesome, thank you. And you're gonna keep moving on. You're not gonna get flustered by yourself because most of the time, once we start thinking too much and not being in the moment, that's when we can't speak, we get flustered, we start sweating a lot, and you're like, okay, you know what? I just can't do this. Better to just keep it simple and keep on talking. And for the last little part in point one is that you can get a lot of different words wrong when you're learning a language, especially Spanish. You get a lot of verb tenses wrong, you can get a lot of uh, adjectives wrong, nouns, but, if you are using a stat and said wrong, right away, that is a very big indicator that you are not proficient in Spanish because it is such a basic verb. And it, this doesn't mean if you're a beginner that I'm chastising you or that I'm saying like, you need to try hard. We all start at a certain point, but I have seen people that are intermediate or even advanced sometimes get said and a stat wrong. And it kind of does them a disservice because they are so good at Spanish but right away by getting these two very common simple verbs wrong, you can be like, ugh, you know, I guess he wasn't that good at Spanish. With other verbs, if you get them wrong, it's, it could be more of a like, a, well, you know, it's, it's a verb he got wrong, but no worries. But I do wanna add, no matter what happens, when you do get, even if you get set in a stat wrong, you're still just practicing. Don't let anyone judge you. Don't judge yourself, you're still learning. So while I'm saying that it's a right away, it's gonna probably be a big dead giveaway that you're still learning Spanish. That's obvious, you are learning Spanish. But just to let you know that if you are trying to get better and you're trying to sound more like a native speaker, using estar and said correctly is definitely needed. Point two is that since said and estar are so common, usually we think about how to use the present tense and we get very good at that. But once we start to get to other tenses, that's where intermediate and advanced people go wrong. I'm looking online to give you the hardest example. So once you have to get to hubieran sido, hubimos sido, estuvimos siendo, no seas, fuéramos, that's when you're gonna start getting it wrong and you're gonna be like, hmm, 
maybe I should stop skirting around it. Because with easy verbs such as this, we tend to skirt around the harder ones, the subjunctives, the future even maybe, the past subjunctive. And we start to, we try to get with the past and the, and the present only. It's really important to learn those other ones around it. Because once you use those on the outskirt, those ones that are like subjunctive and use it correctly, it not only shows that you know Spanish well, but it's very impressive because it's something that most learners can't get right. So with this in mind, normally I would say to learn words by practicing with your language partner. This is the one time that I would say, maybe you should try to get a couple of flashcards, Mason, Anki, and try to memorize these other verbs because, and maybe not even memorize, but try to get very familiar with them just in case that it starts to come up and you go, I have no idea what this is. Because in the present and in the past and even the future, most of the time we can guess and kind of get it right. But once we get to subjunctive, since we don't use it as often in our normal vocabulary, it's gonna be hard to try to guess. And so it's better to, you know what, maybe even look at the conjugation table and say, okay, I'm usually getting that one wrong. Let's see how I can memorize it. So however you choose to memorize it, I would probably do so. I feel like I am all over the place with this video. I think I'm trying to make this very streamlined and it's going all over the place. So if you're still here and you're still trying to learn, thank you. Hopefully you are getting a lot out of this. And point number three of why it's so important is because it builds your fundamental base. So when you're learning a language, what's very important is to have that core that you can start learning other stuff from. So a lot of times when I start teaching people, I see that their learning is like this. They have like highs and like low knowledge, high knowledge, no knowledge. And you might think, why do they have such these big dips? And maybe it's because in the classroom, they got an A in their present tense, but then when it came to their past tense, they got an F in it, in the future they got an A, and it's a lot better. Instead of having all these big dips and trying to avoid those tenses, I would say normally it's better to just go even. So when I get someone that has these big dips, instead of trying to make those highs even higher, I actually just try to bring up those lows so it's more of an even keel. So they can talk in the present tense, past tense, subjunctive, and even though none of them are really good at the moment, it's more important to get them all up so you're not afraid of any one tense. So the fundamental is super important because from there you can start learning and you can say, ah, that's like this, and that's like this, and you can start associating, and it's gonna be a lot easier to acquire the language. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you for listening to this. Almost, it was like almost a rant on Ser en Estad. Hopefully you liked it. In the future, I am going to do a more methodical and Ser en Estad with their tenses and which ones are the most important video. Um, so look out for that. As always, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification to get notified of when I come out with more videos. If you want to learn languages, if you want to learn Spanish especially, you can go to strangelanguageacquisition.com, get on a call with me and see what we can do for you. Follow me on Instagram at Michael Strong Jade, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out. I think I spoke really fast on that one. If you're on YouTube and you're already accustomed to the times two and getting through it even faster, I think mine is like times four at this point. So I'll try to slow it down in the other ones. Take care.